So I'm very pleased to uh, uh, be here and to be able to share uh, maybe some insights, uh, which I think would be also a good uh, uh, basis for what uh, Fazila and Brian is going to say. But really it's uh, a topic, um, I think everybody knows about climate change, I don't need to go into a debate. Uh, if you're a denialist, uh, you're probably better to, to leave the room. Uh, Brian, you should leave the room now. <laughs> um, <coughs> But I think what, I'd, what, what is often uh, missed uh, in the debate, because uh, especially in the, in the global arena where we are debating the issues around uh, climate change and the mitigation uh, of carbon dioxide, uh, greenhouse gases and so on, uh, there is often a, a lack of contextualization of how do you use the climate change agenda to contextualize the debate uh, in a country like South Africa or emerging economy. And I think that's really what uh, I want to talk about. And really to try to build uh, a conception of climate that is not separate from the energy debate and the economy. I think that's really uh, where I want to come through. And the reason for that is that uh, South Africa, like other developing countries, is uh, a world divided into two. There are many poor people. We have a high unemployment rate, 27%, uh, 30%, depending which figures you believe. But nonetheless, the level of labor, uh, unemployed people, uh, lack of labor participation uh, in, the, in the economy uh, is a source of uh, the big uh, inequality, income inequality uh, that, that you see. Um, so we can't ignore that uh, even um, from an environmental point of view, you have to uh, look at the environment, environmental debate in the context of, of the general development uh, issues uh, and uh, unemployment uh, situation uh, in South Africa. Uh, and those are very critical. I think one of the things that, uh, the reason why I want to build on this nexus uh, argument is that a large, to a large extent, uh, there is a tendency by environmentalists to talk about climate issues in separate ways. Um, so the focus is uh, primarily an obsession about uh, carbon emissions and greenhouse gases. I think what we are trying to instill here is how do you, uh, we know that uh, greenhouse gases is a consequence of a particular type of industrial development. Uh, you can say it's a result of, of uh, reliance on fossil fuels, but also uh, at the heart of it is, is a form of uh, organization of, of economy, which is largely capitalist, uh, uh, driven by high levels of commodification and consumption that drives uh, that. So when you, when you are trying to, uh, so I think there's also, as much as uh, the climate change issues are uh, a result of uh, particular types of uh, forms of industrial development uh, and, and uh, economic practices, uh, you could also use it in the agenda to transform uh, the very nature of, of not how you only organize energy, but how you organize the economy. And I think for us, that's really the important part of the debate of how to bring those three things together uh, and not just be focusing on, on the, the mitigation side. I think that that is, that is fundamental uh, for, for our starting point. In South Africa, um, the particularities of, of our economy is that we've largely reliant on, uh, have been reliant on, on coal for the 100 years. It was cheap, abundant. That's not going to be true now uh, anymore in the future. And coal was used to not only uh, support uh, high energy intensive uh, mining sectors, but also during the apartheid era, uh, when Norwegians, Swedish, and other activists around the world were uh, trying to boycott uh, the South African economy, uh, the South African government uh, built um, uh, an economy reliant on uh, coal uh, to avoid some of the uh, oil and other types of sanctions that, that were imposed. So we converted a lot of coal into liquid fuels. So that, that inheritance still continues uh, in South Africa. Uh, 
the consequence of that is that you had a lot of uh, public sector investment uh, in coal and liquefied fuels and the transport sector and so on uh, that is responsible for the, the high levels of carbon emissions that you, you see in South Africa. Uh, that is, uh, so that what we have in South Africa at the present moment, even despite the fact that we uh, understand the, the level of carbon intensity, uh, we have uh, uh, good uh, policies on, on, on climate change. Uh, you know, the South African government always brags about how it's leading uh, the debate. Uh, and to some extent, it's true. Uh, it can provide very important leadership in, in BRICS and, and other segments of, of the international arena. We also are uh, talking about a carbon tax. We also trying to build a very strong uh, energy sector based on, on, on renewables and so on to try to shift that. There is though um, uh, a possibility that some of this uh, progress on, on policy and mobilization of various consti uh, constituencies can be held back by uh, a new evolving political economy in South Africa, uh, which uh, is, can only be described as more coal, more nuclear, more gas, uh, and completely displace uh, what is uh, rhetorically professed as uh, a new direction as far as climate policy and moving away from uh, carbon intensity to be only reinforced uh, in direct and indirect ways by other types of uh, uh, special interest uh, that are lobbying for actually more coal, uh, more nuclear and more gas. Uh, and that, that uh, so you could have, ironically, a low carbon economy based entirely on coal, uh, sorry, nuclear and coal, uh, sorry, gas, um, completely subverting uh, uh, the uh, the sort of progressive uh, uh, agenda around uh, increasing uh, the level of uh, renewables, also changing the structure of the economy uh, that it's less uh, energy intensive, and trying to find uh, other ways of of stimulating uh, economy by creating uh, sectors that uh, are developed on um, the, the, uh, more energy efficient. Uh, and uh, new types of industrial uh, development. So I, I just too quickly to summarize, I mean, and we can probably explore some of these issues because I don't want to speak for 15 minutes and just uh, uh, quickly summarize. Just to say very importantly, in the South African context, uh, we have to turn the thing on its head. We have to say, not be using uh, climate policy uh, as a tool on its own, but in relationship to how we can change uh, fundamentally uh, our energy mix, but also fundamentally how we drive a new kind of inclusive economy. Uh, we always talk about, uh, in jargon, we talk about a transition economy and how we can increase levels of employment uh, by rearranging the political economy by uh, uh, through a new uh, shifts in the energy sector uh, and also creating, uh, uh, diversifying the industrial base. So I think the, let me leave it at that. Thank you very much, Fakir.